Monsieur Necker. Madame Eh bien, do you come bearing good news Your wife. You may rest easy, monsieur. Your wife escaped the massacre. She returned home and left you this letter. Mon Dieu. She's going to meet our daughter and son-in-law at our charity hospital. She may already be there. Madame, I did not dare to dream of such an outcome. My wife and daughter. Can you imagine? And I thought I had lost both of them. The three of us will be able to leave the kingdom and put these horrors behind us forever. What about the bombs? They are not in your possession. No, not yet. You must ensure they do not benefit the king, madame. You will find them in the Amois de Fer, in the Palais des Tuileries. Do with them as you see fit. As long as the king does not use them. As for me, I'm going to find my family at once. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I pray that your efforts will be successful. Adieu, madame. Adieu. Minister Necker has given his bonds to me. Mon Dieu. This sum is nearly impossible to comprehend. I spoke with Monsieur Lavoisier in the first days of the Estates General. As director of the Caisse des Comptes, he estimates that these bonds currently represent one-fifth of the Kingdom's treasury. Wealth that the King squanders for his personal benefit according to his whims. Ma foi. Monsieur Necker certainly has been very generous to his adoptive country. I'm afraid you are mistaken. Monsieur Lavoisier claimed that this loan was granted at an exorbitant rate. Whatever his fondness for the nation, Monsieur Necker never lost his business sense. Eh bien, Monsieur. To what use shall we employ this boonful fortune? If I could spend it, I'd do everything I could to return to the people their confiscated freedom. To begin, I would get them the bread they so sorely need. It is only after the scourge of famine has been vanquished that armed patriots might then be able to rise up against despotism. And where will you find wheat, Robespierre? Will you steal it from under the noses of the automats who have sworn to destroy the human race? As for arming the people, this is another one of your delusions. How could your ragged pack of wretches win any sort of battle that'd be unable to lift a sword? When you insult the people, you insult me, Monsieur de Lafayette. I am not insulting anyone, Robespierre. But I happen to know what it takes to fight, unlike you. Monsieur. I was but a lad of 15 when I took up arms, and everyone here knows my role in the liberation of America from British rule. If you allow me to dispose of these bonds, I will found an army that will annihilate the Clockwork King's diabolical machines. As soon as I have the opportunity to leave Paris, I will rally the officers and troops that are stationed in the provinces. Then I will call for a mass uprising. I will have more than enough money to pay their wages and procure the weapons we need. And you will have obedient troops at your beck and call, ready to repress anyone who challenges your power. These troops will only serve the will of the people. I swear it. Are you sure that the king has spared the rest of the kingdom, Monsieur le Marquis? I am almost certain of it, mon père. Despite all of his resources, the king does not have enough manpower to occupy all the garrisons in the country. Aegis, no member of this assembly can force your hand. The choice is yours. To whom will you entrust Monsieur Neckel's bonds? The bonds are not yet in my possession. Then please continue your search. pass to examine the safe there may be a way to force it open
The lock wasn't forced. Whoever opened it had the key. They're still there. There's something engraved on it. H.G. Ricchetti. Comte de Mirabeau. Whoever broke into this safe left behind the most valuable thing in it. This doesn't make sense.
have just come from the Twillery. The armoire de fer has been ransacked. Diable. Someone beat us to it. This is very unfortunate. God only knows what we would have found there. Whoever it was had to fight for it. I found a body there, killed by automats. Mon Dieu. How dreadful. Dreadful indeed. Especially since I discovered this in the victim's hand. And what is that, pray tell? A dueling pistol. With your name engraved on its plate. Oh, I... May we? You're right. It is my pistol. It was stolen along with a number of other things. It happened just before the Estates General at my lodgings in Versailles. But how on earth did my weapon end up in the hands of this poor soul? I am certain we will find an explanation. I'm going to have a look around. With your permission, of course. Well, since I'm in no position to dissuade you... You appear to have burnt these papers in a hurry. I'm eager to hear your explanation. It's nothing at all, I assure you. Frivolous letters that were cluttering my desk. I find your defense unconvincing. Why won't you tell me the truth? You don't understand. This is a matter of the utmost importance that I cannot discuss with a creature such as yourself. I am an automat, monsieur. This is true, but I serve the Queen, and my only aim is to put a stop to the crimes that have befallen the Kingdom. Well, know that you're not alone in serving the Queen. You claim to be a friend of the Queen. The King has gone insane. After what happened at Meudon, that much is clear. We can no longer expect any leniency from him. Hence, my support for his wife. She's a headstrong woman, and much wiser than she lets on. You must know that she means to put her youngest on the throne, the young prince, Louis Charles. A regency would restore peace and unity to the kingdom. Then all that would remain would be to establish a constitution. I have the support of the people. They trust me. I'm the only one that can bring about these reforms. What was in those letters you threw into the fire? My private correspondence with the king. I had a key to the armoire, which served as a mailbox. Are you conspiring with the king? No, you don't understand. I was something of a shadow advisor, a, a diplomat, working in complete discretion. I feared his stubbornness would lead the kingdom to ruin, so I tried to reassure him regarding the aims of the Third Estate. But when Vaucanson told me what happened at Meudon, I realized it was a lost cause. I found your pistol in the hands of a dead man. Who was this unfortunate soul? Mathieu, one of the servants I had sent to retrieve the letters. I gave him the pistol for self-defense. Alas, it seems it was of little use to him against the King's automats. Tell me, what happened at Meudon? It's all here in this letter, written in the King's own hand. Please, give it to the Queen. She must learn the truth. Why were you in such a hurry to destroy your correspondence? The letters contained sensitive information about my Third Estate colleagues. If it had gotten out, I would have surely lost my allies' trust, as well as any hope of establishing a regency along with it.
What is this? Oh, that. It is a missive sent by my father, the Marquis de Mirabeau. The scoundrel who shamelessly dares to call himself the friend of man. He writes to say that he is on the brink of death, in such desperate state that he has received extreme unction. This reprobate used his final moments on this mortal plane to send me threats yet again. He swears that he will torment me from beyond the grave. How is that possible? To my knowledge, he has not yet deigned to shuffle off this mortal coil. In any case, the satisfaction of knowing he is dead would not assuage my concern. This man is more persistent than the plague. He is capable of anything. He has spent his entire life persecuting his family. And I believe he is ready to spend his eternal rest continuing to do the same. I need to know what he is planning. Where is he now? At his home in Argenteuil. Given the circumstances, going to ask him for an explanation is out of the question. If only I could speak with Monseigneur de Lafare, the bishop who heard his last confession.